October 29th, 2023. You know what you don't need me to tell you is what a shit show it's been since around the time of the solar eclipse back at mid-month. You know, the whole the whole thing. It was just quite a quite a time. And here we are wrapping up the month of October. And it's kind of like we got one more week or so of some stuff going on that's going to get our attention in this similar kind of way. Then we get into November. And if you're watching this, if you're watching this on Saturday, October 28th, before 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, then join me live at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time when we will do the November forecast. There are some kind of interesting things about November as we go forward. And it's definitely a different vibe than October, and I'm happy for that. So what do we have on tap this week? Well, we're coming off of the eclipse, right? We're coming off of the eclipse that was at the end of last week. Everything over with? Not really. First of all, eclipse season officially lasts all the way down until the new moon, which is on hmm, right around November 12th or so. So we're, and will still be feeling the eclipse energy, that jangly, that kind of, oh my gosh, what are we going to do sort of feeling is going to persist right down until that time. And it actually gets a little pop, but that's for November or a couple of weeks from now. So the energy is definitely subsiding a little bit as we go through this week, but we're not back at baseline yet. We have a few interesting aspects. First of all, we have Halloween. And Halloween is always a nice holiday, hey? Coming into Halloween, we have Venus trying Uranus. Now, Venus, planet of love, relationship, aesthetics. In Virgo, where things are a little bit more reserved, but in a nice relationship to revolutionary Uranus, who is in Venus's home sign of Taurus. And that kind of suggests that they can work things out very well indeed. What does that mean? Well, could be some nice Halloween parties. It suggests basically that as we get this week started, there's a little bit of flexibility, willingness to try something a little bit new, breaking out of the box in terms of routines and relationship, but also in terms of aesthetics, you know, what we're doing for fun, socializing. Things could be a little bit different, and that's that's sort of experimental approach to things ought to serve us pretty well. Sunday, Monday, and there'll be a bit of that lingering through till Tuesday. The excitement really starts Thursday, Friday, and we have a couple of different flavors to this. First of all, we have some very upbeat energy, very upbeat energy. The sun in Scorpio is going to oppose Jupiter in Taurus. Sun Jupiter aspects, they're kind of a little bit of like ego inflators. They're kind of the thing that would make us feel pretty good about stuff. A little faith in the future, optimism, a sense of I can do this. Very different from last week's energy when the sun was squaring Pluto. Now we have the sun opposite Jupiter. We're getting a real boost of energy. It was two weeks ago, actually, that the sun was square Pluto. We're getting a burst of energy, a sense of we can do it. It's an optimistic kind of time. So we've got that going on. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind because that is Wednesday, Thursday especially. It's exact in the earliest hours of Friday. And then things start to calm down. And what happens exactly on Friday? Well, you ask. Venus, again, Venus. This time, Venus is opposite Neptune. Now, Venus, again, in Virgo, where things are a little bit of reserved, service, helping out. What can I do for you? That's the Venus in Virgo thing. You know, I love you. What can I do for you? Or if you love me, maybe you can do this for me. That's the Venus in Virgo vibe. Socializing, a little bit more reserved. It's not... Uh, it's not really the big indulgent kind of energy that Venus sometimes has. Neptune is in Pisces. This is sort of spiritual cast of this. The, the sense of service, the sense of being able to give to others, wanting to give to others. 
having compassion for others, very strong, but it's Venus. So it's, it's strong in our personal lives as well as sort of on the global scale. So maybe it kind of opens us up a little bit, sort of opens up the heart, sort of opens up the, the sense of what can I do, but, you know, think globally, act locally. This is sort of asking us to participate at the local level with our friends, our family, that annoying person who is driving in front of you, perhaps, or the person at the store who doesn't really seem to care if they have their job or they don't. This is asking us to maybe open up a little bit to that. Generally speaking, though, Venus opposite Neptune, it should be fun. You know, any of this stuff, any of this stuff, as always, it's the general vibe. It's what we're all feeling. But it, how much it's going to affect you, well, that's open. That's an open question. So, you know, when there's a thunderstorm, everybody sees the lightning, everybody hears the thunder, everybody sees the wind. But, you know, if it hits your chart exactly, well, then maybe the lightning hits the tree in your backyard. Otherwise, it's just something that we feel. This Venus Uranus energy at midweek and then the Venus Neptune energy relationships that are in a point let's call it at a tipping point could really find some energy coming out of this this is a uh, pretty positive <laughs> maybe it's not positive um it's the kind of energy where if you're feeling hey this is working good let's see where we go the both of these venus aspects not to mention sun jupiter very much encouraging if, on the other hand, things are not going well, these aspects could really polarize differences between people. So wherever you are, wherever you're heading, this is kind of an opportunity to go a little bit further. For most of us, it's just, you know, chance to socialize, maybe get out there and do some stuff, break up routines a little bit, have some fun. Okay, have your fun early because on Saturday, Saturn stations to go direct. And that's really the news of this week. These other aspects, they're there, but Saturn station uh, is something that we kind of can't get away from. Sa Saturn, the planet of work, responsibility, restriction. And when Saturn stations, we all feel that. It's this kind of heaviness, a little bit of gray energy, let's call it, that persists. Um it would suggest that towards the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday, do some work, take on the burden, what needs to be done. This is not a time to shirk your responsibilities. This is a time to accept your responsibilities and do, you don't have to like it, but do what needs to be done. It's very much a time where uh, if there's something that very serious needs to be said, you're gonna say it. I would keep my expectations for going out and having a good time on Saturday, Friday night, Saturday. I'm not saying that you can't have a good time. Saturn's in Pisces, after all. And we have those other aspects just behind us. But it's not really feeling like uh, this is going to be great. We have a waning moon, pretty much last quarter moon. And we also have this... Uh, this kind of, well, it would be, be a waning moon in Leo, wouldn't it? Uh, that's not bad. But uh, the, and before that, the, the moon in Cancer, that's not so great. That's a little protective. But the Saturn station, I digress, the Saturn station is not a have a lot of fun kind of uh, celestial marker. Do what you need to do. The more the more that you take care of your work, the more that you address your responsibilities, the more that you accept your responsibility, the better you're going to enjoy the weekend and the Saturn station. If you've put something off, if you've left something undone, whether it is something you needed to do at home or something you need to do at work or something that you need to do in your relationship, if it's left undone, you're not going to be able to forget it. You may you may be able to get away with not doing it, but it's going to be on your mind. It's going to sort of haunt you. It's going to come in and give you this little nudge from time to time. But I should have done that. 
I should have done that. You know, the kind of you wake up at 4 a.m. and say, oh, you know, that sort of thing. So get done what needs to be done. Make as much progress as you can. Put your shoulder to the wheel Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And, you know, if you had that good tired because you've done the work, then, you know, you can go have a little bit of fun. It should be kind of okay. Be aware that when Saturn stations... It's often the case that minor illnesses go around. Uh, now, in the day, that wasn't such a big thing. But of course, now, now we're liable to shudder a little bit. Usually, it's things like colds, a stomach virus, Pisces, <laughs> foot fungus. Um, usually, minor stuff goes around. They'll just knock you down for a little bit. The reason is that immunity gets lowered when Saturn stations. We, we feel a little bit less vital, a little bit less less ability to go out and fight the sun jupiter aspect beforehand you know what it might get us to do it might get us to overextend ourselves a little bit more towards midweek and then <laughs> you might go out on wednesday or thursday and wind up having sort of the uh the hangover uh, on saturday whether that's literal or figurative so be aware of that at the collective level the storm that we have had during this eclipse season as we wind down towards the end of eclipse season, Saturn is sort of stepping in and saying, okay, there's a lot of stuff out here. Now, who's cleaning up the mess? Who's who's going to take care of this? Who's cleaning up the mess? And we'll have to see if anybody steps up to clean up the mess. It's a, it's a hell of a job at this point, I'll tell you. But, you know, let, let's, let's leave it open as a possibility. So that's something that's probably going to happen. Well, that's the feel at the collective levels. Who's cleaning up the mess that we've made? And what can we do? Watch out for things falling. When Saturn rules falls and when Saturn stations, things fall. With Saturn stationed to go retrograde a few months ago, there were not one, but two stories about dogs that had fallen off of tower one of the dog fell off a cliff in washington state and a dog fell off of a tower in connecticut and those were national news stories about falling dogs we'll uh we'll have to see but you know, watch out for things falling that, that's a that's a typical manifestation something will symbolically fall the dogs were fine the dogs were fine one fell like 300 feet down a cliff and was was okay. The other one, 35 feet off a tower, was okay. Who knows with Saturn, right? But there'll be <laughs> there'll probably be something that fall. There was also a car, a car that had gone off the, and fell into a house. That was an. But I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about past Saturn stations. We'll have to see what happens here. But things falling are a real possibility. Mostly though. You want to take care of yourself as we get to the weekend. Don't want to overextend. Take on a task at a time. Not great for multitasking. Not that multitasking is ever really good, except for you Geminis. But not that multitasking is, is ever really good. But this is a time when we really kind of want to do one thing at a time. Sort of slow and steady wins the race as we wrap up this week. All right, if I can see you on... Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That'll be great. If not, you can always watch the live later on. It's just as good in repeats. And <laughs> probably just as good in repeats. And um, I will see you next week for the weekly forecast.